Good evening. Welcome to The Next Word. I'm your host, Chris Warnke, and tonight we have a really special guest, His Excellency Hamdullah Mohib, Ambassador from Afghanistan. And I have to say, he has helped to redefine the economic, social, and political narrative of what's happening in Afghanistan today, and it's very exciting, and we're going to hear about it tonight. And you are. I, I, I truly give you a lot of credit. Well, thank for, you, Chris. For, for all the things you've done yeah. in such a short life, I might say. I'm amazed at when I found out your age, because for what you've done in your, what, 35 years, well, you have changed so much of what has occurred in Afghanistan in the last 10 years, 15 years. I'd say, like, what, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, women mm -hmm. were not where they are today in Afghanistan. A lot of it from your good work. Well, I, Chris, thank you very much for, for, uh, for talking with us and, and taking an interest in Afghanistan um, oh, and the progress and, and the achievements it has had in the last 17 years. We are thankful f to the um, support we have received um, uh, from the United States and, and our mm -hmm. other allies in Europe um, and NATO mm -hmm. partners all together who have come mm -hmm. to help us at the time of need. We're grateful for that su support. But I must say that Afghanistan and the United States relationship started way before mm -hmm. we ever knew. Right. Uh, and I, 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 I often tell this mm -hmm. story of what uh, uh, Professor um, uh, Fred Starr wrote in his book called The Lost Enlightenment. It's about the, um, the, the Central Asia, the, the era of the Enlightenment in, in, in Central Asia. Um, so mm -hmm. in his book, he writes that in the 11th century, um, one, of, um, uh, one of the Afghan scientists sitting in Ghazni um, in modern-day Afghanistan uh, worked out the circumference of the earth. And um, he hypothesized that if, um, if this is what we think the earth is, which is round, and here is what, um, uh, and, 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 and what we know, knew of the known world, uh, it wouldn't work for the, there must be another continent somewhere for this to work. Uh, and he calculated where that continent would be. It turned out where the American continent later was discovered 500 years later by Columbus. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, uh, by Columbus, it was, um, the, uh, it was only a few miles away from where, where Biruni had discovered. So relationship with wow. the United States and, and America starts and way come. before we ever knew. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, from 11th century. Uh, but our recent relationship is, is one that I think uh, that was formed by tragedy. Uh, yeah. uh, but we have become strong partners um, in, in, in our region and become allies. Uh, Together, the United States and Afghanistan have formed a partnership um, that is fighting uh, against terrorism. Right. Um, but at the same time, we're working on opportunities uh, for okay. for our you know, mutual future. And and I know you've been look, you've been an activist, and mm. you've certainly you got awards for all of your work mm. in terms of elevating women and youth in Afghanistan. And and you that's how, frankly, I think. You, a star was born in you when, when you were a university student mm. in London, and you've taken all of that experience and those ideas, and today we see the fruit of all that and what's going on, I think, in Afghanistan with women as an example. I mean, what, in terms of schools, in terms of women being allowed to go to schools, in terms of, you know, taking positions, the business positions, and, and in fact, in the government, in public service. Correct. I mean, women are, now have very key roles. Absolutely. I think what, that, that's another one of those good stories that I think the news often forgets to, uh, to tell. I, um, I, I have witnessed in my last three and a half years uh, in government uh, the role women are playing in, in what, yeah. w and how far they have come. Um, a good example is from when we uh, hosted uh, about five uh, really um, um, top leaders in government, women leaders in government here in Washington. And when they first arrived, they're all under 40. Two of them were deputy ministers. One was on the commission wow. for um, 
Civil Services Commission, the Appointments Board, where all the government appointments are made. Um, uh, and then the other was the Commissioner on the um, uh, con Constitution, the protection mm -hmm. of the Constitution. Right. Um, and one was a member of um, a local government in Kabul. Um, a local representative in Kabul. They, when they first arrived in Washington, the first two days were spent where people wanted to know about how what their role is, is in, mm -hmm. in as a woman in government. Right. So everybody wanted to to know in, and understand how women feel being in government. Um, and I think the women were kind of a little bit insulted by by that behavior, not having been asked any substantive questions about their work rather about how they feel how they feels, as women right. being in government. And that changed, though. In, in the, by the third day, the questions had stopped being about how do you feel being a woman in government to being uh, w one of them was a deputy minister of foreign affairs, the other was deputy right. minister of finance, about how are we doing in terms of finance in Afghanistan and what are we doing to reform our, uh, our you know, uh, uh, fiscal uh, responsibilities mm -hmm. in our country. And, and the questions became very technical. Uh, they became very substantive. That's interesting. Uh, but it took a couple of days for people to realize that these are not token women. They're not just there to fill a quota. They're there to do a job. Right. And, they're, and, they're, and they're representing um, all of Afghanistan, not just women alone. And, and that's what the new Afghanistan is. is Women's exactly. role today in right. Afghanistan is not a, a token role that, 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 that right. may have began. Uh, that, that said, a lot of the, the women who initially, after post-Taliban, when, uh, when the government was formed, played a very significant role in, uh, in shaping what it is, uh, what, Af what is right. Afghanistan today. But the the new generation that has um, that, that has come that has come of age and are now in leadership positions in the country, um, are 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 changing that and taking it to the next level. Uh, they're paving the way for for the future generations, but at the same time playing a very critical role in in establishing the kind of government that we would want to see our children uh, 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 grow with uh, and and be supported by. And, and the services lot, that the government right. should provide to them. Right? Do you attribute a lot of that to social media and to the internet and the fact that they have so many more platforms and tools that young people today can, you know, can communicate? Obviously, much, at a much higher level than we were able to do 20 years ago. Or, and this has also assisted, yeah. you know, just these women in, I think, in understanding what their role should be. And I think it's. They're tremendous, and I've seen them, and I've seen the young women yeah. that, you, that came here for the robotics contest right. for First Global, the big comp international yeah. competition, last summer, right? When they Correct. came and they, they, they competed, there were women in the group, mm -hmm. young women, if I'm not mistaken, for the um, international um, competition. competition. robotics. Group. Correct. Right. Well, um, it's a it's a number of things. It's it can't be just one of those. Right, right. no, I know. The, the the fact that the people have had opportunities um, uh, to to get an education right, both right. inside the country, and inside outside, Afghanistan, right. and abroad. Uh, most of these people have have had uh, an opportunity to to further their educations abroad and see what is mm. outside and learn and benefit from some of right. the best education that the world has to offer. Um, it's also um, all of the, mm, the the opportunities inside the country now in an uninterrupted system of education for them in healthcare and all of that put together right. creates or leads to right. what we have today. Right. Um, uh, and there are some really, really practical questions that everybody has to ask themselves. Can I make this contribution? Can, can I really do um, what is required of me? Um, can I live uh, 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 the life that, uh, that that I need to? If you are a parent, you have to think about where you're going to send right. your children to yeah. school, um, and can that be done? So all of those, all of those come together to uh, to form. A person in form of person's decision to to do whatever they do in life, and and if they're f joining the government, um, they ob obviously have to take all of those into consideration, and at the same time, um, their experiences from the past and having had the opportunity yeah, see, yeah. to be able to contribute uh, in a positive manner, 
the, the women that I mentioned, most of them had been graduates of uh, American universities right. of one form or right. another. They, 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 um, uh, they would complete their schooling. Some of them had completed yes, their sir. schooling in Afghanistan and then had come to the United mm -hmm. States to do um, and to study for, for mm -hmm. university. And then others who had um, completed their undergraduate programs outside, either in Afghanistan or um, in a third country, and came here to uh, for their postgraduate mm -hmm. degree before returning to their country, for before returning to Afghanistan, um, uh, to to join civil society in in the private sector, and right. and to be finally uh, in in government now. And I've seen I've seen these women, of course, through yeah. some of these initiatives. Like the initiative to educate Afghan women, Correct. and yeah. you, know, you know, Afghan which women, you were part women of, which right? I was part of, yeah. and you know, I mean, you know, it, it's remarkable that these women. Hey, it <laughs> turns out one of those women who are here, who is a deputy minister of a uh, foreign, foreign affairs, affairs is, yes, is, is a, a graduate. A graduate is a graduate. A, Absolutely, a initiative to educate Afghan women. So, uh, it's when we're building a tangible project, it's yes. easy to see what is built right. because right. you see it. Yeah. Um, with the, with development like edu in education or in um, in many other fields like that where you're right. looking at social development, you don't often see yeah. the impact of what you're doing immediately. And long, yeah, uh, of course. You would have to give them time. time and, and this is a this good is example. A good, yeah, For example, yeah. the, the initiative yeah. that you were part of that, that um, educates young women, bring right. them to the United States, provides them with an opportunity to right. get an education and... Um, uh, and and then and they end up going back and serving um, the country in 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 quite right. in the ways we can't even imagine before they when oh, they right, start right. So this deputy foreign minister is already right. playing a, quite an important role for the entire country. Absolutely, and, uh, and it's not just for progress of women in Afghanistan. It's for the it's progress problem for of everybody. everybody. Right. And I know the country. Look, we have they have challenges, and my condolences go out. To you and the Afghan people today and last week with okay. the recent, you know, the recent bombing, certainly the one this morning where, yeah. where a number of journalists were, were okay. killed. Um, Thank you. And so my condolences. And I know, and, and I think Americans, by nature too, have been following these kinds of challenges hmm. that the Afghan people have had to endure. And it's, you know, it's, We've it's been something paying a huge you are price. strong people. <laughs> we have been paying a big price, a big price. for for freedom yes. and democracy. Yes. It started with uh, w with uh, the war against yeah. the Soviet Union, um, who invaded Afghanistan, um, and and it it continues. Where uh, there are forces um, out there who want to impose a way of living on the Afghan people that we do not want. Right. Uh, the Afghans are quite democratic in in nature, and, and this is this. Uh, and this is a system that we have long wished for and worked towards. Right. Um, even when it was a monarchy, there were experiments with uh, with democratic systems in place right. and representation. And, and today, we are paying a huge price for that democracy and for that freedom. Um, it's not just the, the 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 bombings of today that uh, right. that we saw. We uh, in in the recent weeks. Many of our citizens were killed oh, yeah. uh, 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 while they were registering uh, to for, vote. To right? vote, right? Wow. They were, wow. and and a... and that is th that's an indication of what kind of a price are we paying for right. for democracy? And that really puts it in perspective, uh, especially for people that we hear we take this for granted, mm. just being able to go register for vote to vote and not, you know, thinking that you're going to be killed in the process. I mean, it's you know. We, we take a lot, I mean, here, we understand the value of freedom, but what, what your people, you know, what the people go through, I mean, they went to register with this was last week, correct? Mm -hmm. When the bombing occurred, the suicide correct. bomber, who was actually well, going, it's whoever. It wasn't one incident, quite a few incidents across the country. Yes, yeah, uh, yes. But horrific. Horrific. Uh, there's just looking yeah. at the scene, these heinous crimes against humanity, against the people who just yeah. want to s live in peace and... Um, and and be a peaceful part right. of the world, right. uh, of the international community. Um, it it is like I said, a huge price. The Afghans are uh, are fighting for their future Amen. and for stability in our region and the world. Um, we want to see an Afghanistan 
uh, that played an important role. The Afghanistan of the Al Biruni, right, who discovered right. America. The right, Afghanistan right. of uh, what, what we call Ibn Sina, Avicenna, who, yeah. who was the uh, father of medicine. The Afghanistan of Rumi. Well, well, Rumi, well, Maulana Balkhi is w how we refer to him mm. in Afghanistan. It was, he was born in Afghanistan. This is the Afghanistan that we want that to return to. Right. A place where ideas, people, and, and goods flow freely. This is the Afghanistan that we aspire to, an Afghanistan we want to return to. Um, an Afghanistan that many Americans were lucky to witness in the 60s and 70s right. when, they, when, they, when they went to, um, to right. Afghanistan as part of Peace Corps or when they went to right. work in Afghanistan right. on, on the several projects that, uh, that we worked together on. Um, or just uh, as, um, you know, for vacation in that country. And they still have really found memories of Afghanistan from then. It's fascinating. Yeah. That's a fascinating country. And, and we want to get back, and we are going to get back what, we, what we've lost. And we're working hard, and, and I think a lot of the time the Americans perhaps do not know how much of a, a sacrifice we, the Afghan people, are, 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 are enduring just to ensure that we have that future, right. uh, but that uh, um, America and the rest of the world have a strong ally in the region too, um, th that, uh, that's not dependent on, on their support, right. Uh, right. but one that contributes to the international community uh, as a free and uh, democratic member of the international community. So on that positive note, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. You're watching The Next Word. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes, and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Welcome back. You're watching The Next Word. And tonight's guest is His Excellency Hamdullah Mohib, ambassador from Afghanistan. Ambassador. So, I have to say, okay, you're here, you, you came, you, you married your beautiful American wife, Lyle. You've been here since 2015, but it's, and it's been a, actually a short journey for what you've done and what you've accomplished in so many, really, yeah. short time. Um, so we know you're special. I know you're special because I know, I know what you, you know, you've been through and they only send the best and the brightest from the country that they come to. You started though, you went to school at 16 in London, correct? To a community college. Correct. So you started very young and you're the, the youngest of 11 children. So you had to fight for everything. <laughs> it's a lot of competition. Yeah. So I guess you learned early in life yeah, I, how I to read secure the, the, grass, the, the brass ring as they say. I read somewhere that uh, God gives you siblings so you know that the world is unfair. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good line. Would you read that? That's good. That's a good point. Uh, correct. I mean, I, I had to, we, we had through, we all had the entire mm. country endured through a lot of hardships. Yeah, we lived life of refugees, asylum seekers, right. and, uh, uh, and, and difficulties, whether they were in, uh, in, in our neighborhood or out there right. in, in the West. Uh, I think there were some of us were lucky enough to be able to uh, to get to places like London and be, and be able to get right. an education and um, and establish ourselves. Um, not everybody was as lucky. Right. Um, this uh, I, I take as uh, that as um, you know, uh, as a fortunate moment in my life. Uh, but it wasn't easy. Let me tell you that those of us who have been refugees and asylum seekers. Right. Uh, you don't even Very want difficult. to be a refugee no. in heaven. No. Uh, home is home, no matter what right. that home right. is. Um, and Afghanistan has always been and always is in the hearts of people who, are, who live abroad, uh, the Afghan diaspora, and I meet with m Many. a lot of them here in the U.S. Um, they, um, they don't 
they follow the events that happen in the country on a daily basis, many of them who have not had an opportunity to return for a long time, of course, do not understand the complexities mm -hmm. um, of, um, of what's going on in the country and are only looking or judging the country based on what they read in, uh, and see on TV mm -hmm. or read in the newspapers. And, and, and it's not a very realistic reflection right. of what the country endures and, and, what, and, and how far it has come in just a, a mere 17 years. Uh, if you consider yeah. the, that, uh, that Afghanistan was, oh, and most of our cities and infrastructure were almost entirely destroyed by, uh, by uh, the, right. the first the yes. occupation of right. the Soviet Union and then the later a civil war, uh, it, there was no man-made, almost nothing man-made left. Just to give you a right. few examples, right. They, um, we only had about 8,000 students in universities across the country in 2002. Wow. In a population 8, of? In a population of about 20, 20 to 3 million. Wow. Um, about only about 8,000 students wow. in universities. Now, we graduate 300,000 students a year from wow. universities and institutions wow. of higher That's education. Easy. Um, it, it, it can be said Huge. about anything right. in that right. matter. We, we couldn't even make a phone right. call from, from in the country. Uh, if you wanted to make a phone call, we had to go to a neighboring country to make, to make right. that connection. There is no mention, there, there was no internet or any connectivity. Today, uh, th there is about 70% penetration uh, or of, in some places even phones? more of cell phone services. Really? Which is uh, huge. Depending on who you hear, some right. of them may claim that that's almost 90%, but I think... Uh, about yeah, 70, but it's still a 70, huge it's number. Huge, yeah. uh, and, and internet usage has, has skyrocketed, yes. um, and that all through wireless technologies. Afghanistan has come a long way. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, there are now 16-year-old uh, girls competing in robotic competitions with, with their peers from across right, the right, world. Right, right. They're not competing with, with just with right. just people from the third world, they're competing from with people from across the world, and and, and since they were in Washington, they've gone off and, and competed in other competitions across really? the world, wow. and, and in one they came in first. Oh my God! In Europe, really? wow! Uh, before so Estonia, uh, yeah, Estonia, yes. which is really, really yes, good in their yes, technological, yes, no, they're known for good, how good they are in technology for these girls to be able to compete right. with that. That's the new Afghanistan. Yes. That is the Afghanistan that was established or, 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 or in, in the last 17 years, the progress that the people have right. made. Uh, and um, we are um, we are who we are as a result of some of the challenges right. we faced. Right. I wouldn't be the person I am today if had it not been for all of what right. uh, I went through in, uh, in my life. And I wouldn't wish it on anyone, to be honest, though. That's I wouldn't wish that life on anybody. Uh, but it did turn it, it, it did result in who I am and who everybody, who all of my right. generation of Afghans are, who are extremely driven uh, to ensure that we built the peaceful and prosperous Afghanistan that we all want and had not and, and wished right. for when we were younger. And, and couldn't uh, and didn't, didn't have. Didn't have. Yeah. And you know, you went and you went into computer science when you right. went to college, correct? Yes. So it's interesting. Well, you were on the cusp, of, you know, the, just the, the new, yeah. the new kind of revolution. Yeah. And, you know, it was interesting. So you decided. So. Well, it's it's, it's, it's a great. It's it, I think it's one of the greatest honors to be able to serve my country. You know, uh, um, and it, it it's. Uh, but that didn't just happen. It didn't, of course, it no, didn't. No, just no, happen. that just didn't happen. Yeah. Because I mean, you did a lot of work yeah. prior to all of that yeah. in terms of your of your advocacy for you know for community building and right. you know empowering women and youth and I mean, you got awards. I was for always this. interested in uh, in serving um, our people and right. and whether I was a student or or worked. Uh, had a full-time job at a university. I, I was always interested in the community angle of what we can do to um, uh, to organize. First of all, to self-organize first, and help ourselves. I'm a believer right. that if we don't help ourselves, no one's not going to happen. No, no amount of external support is going to help us build what we want. Uh, so I had always been engaged right. in that aspect of it, and I'm really honored to be able to serve this, and especially in this important partnership that we have with the, the United States. 
you mentioned my wife. I, 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 I yes. by the way, just for the clarification of your audiences, I didn't come here and marry her. No, here. I know, but you met her. We met in Afghanistan, yes. and she had come to work in, in our country. Uh, and I think uh, uh, she she fell in love with with, uh, with, with the, the people country. in the country and 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 I want every American yeah. to see that Afghanistan yes. that that when you go yes. uh, and you see the warmth of the people the beauty of the yeah. land uh, and that hospitality and that welcoming attitude and and the resilience of our our population yeah. despite everything that we have gone through. through right uh, and 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 there isn't it's um, uh, i see this in veterans american veterans who have served in afghanistan over a million of them who who have uh, over the years well, served in, the, in, a, in afghanistan well. who have come back and and tell me these wonderful stories Isn't of their great? time in the country well. and they tell me they miss they miss afghanistan uh, and they would like to go back and they would like to return in a civilian capacity of some sort visit the country uh, and, and they tell, uh, they just, they're in awe of that beauty that the country had and the hospitality of our, our people. And we want Americans to be able to witness that in, uh, you know, firsthand someday. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, so. there, actually, Americans are witnessing some of your, the women, I know there's a woman here in Maryland mm. that's running for, you know, for, Correct, a, yes. for an electoral, like, yeah. uh, like, right, is that an Afghan-American woman? An Afghan-American. There are actually two Afghan-Americans running. There, yeah, there so is they're... one in Maryland and yes. one in California. Yes, I've heard those, uh, yes. They're running for Congress. They're both born here the, uh, and, and uh, right. two Afghan parents, of course, um, and uh, are, are, are a very active part of their, their society and their community. Uh, and I think um, th their uh, constituents would be lucky to have them as their representatives. And they're very, I noticed that the Afghan American, you know, the Afghan American men and women, yeah. do get involved in the political process. And it's obvious from what I've seen, yeah. the last four years, six years, ten years, yeah. and now more so than ever. But now the women are really mm -hmm. getting far more involved, and they're running. So if if people want to find out about a lot of your projects and your programs. And you, get, you may involve, you know, with the embassy activities or anything that they can be helpful. Whether it's the initiative to educate Afghan women, where can they um, then go to your website? The best thing I think would be to go to our website. It's right. AfghanEmbassy.us. Okay. Uh, they can find us on Twitter, on Instagram, yes, yeah, you're, and on Facebook. You're good. <laughs> That's all that computer everyone. science background. Yeah. <laughs> so you can find us on social media um, uh, and, and, of course, okay. on our website. Okay. Great. So thank yeah. you again. Thank you. Okay. You've been watching The Next Word. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening. Good night. <laughs>